When 9-11 happened, I was supposed to come to the United States. I was six years old. My father obtained the visa for us. He petitioned us to come to the United States. We were all ready to go. Our bags were packed. We went to the airport. Then 9-11 happened and they turned us away and we had to go back home. When we were returned, my feelings were embarrassment and sadness. I was embarrassed because I was saying goodbye to my friends. I'm gonna go to America now. And then we had to come back. And it's sad because I never knew my dad. Like he came when I was two, but I don't remember it. I don't remember him at all. So I was excited to go see my father and I was not able to do so because we were turned away. I grew up in Eritrea, it's in East Africa. I'm the youngest of eight. I dealt with sexual trauma and abuse when I was a kid from like age six to 11. We had neighbors, they were both father and son. They would just come over to the house, it's normal because you just trust them. And my mom was either working, I don't know what she was doing, probably working. Um, and my siblings were out, so the son would come over. Um, did what he wanted and then he would leave. And it's just, they wouldn't, like nobody would ask questions. And I didn't know what was happening internally. Like I didn't, I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know. I couldn't really, cause I didn't know what, what it was. We don't, we don't talk about those kind of things. We don't know what sex is. We don't, we don't really talk about this stuff. And no one would believe you if you did back then. Be like, oh, did you want it? There was that mentality I'm like, what did you do to kind of bring that upon yourself? When I eventually immigrated to the United States, I was 12 years old and we moved to Alexandria, Virginia. I missed home. I wanted to go back home because it was familiar. Even though I went through all the trauma, it was something that I was used to. In the United States, I felt very alone, like I didn't belong here. At age 18, I signed up for the military. I went to the army. After going through basic training, I was stationed in South Korea. It was really scary. It was my first time that I went out of the country by myself. And I was a 92 golf. It's a culinary specialist. So that's where I learned to cook. When I went to the military, I realized I did not know how to cook. I just took any job. I just wanted to leave. When I was in Korea, my best friend was raped and she did not report it. And she was feeling suicidal. And I asked her like, why aren't you reporting it? She said, nobody's gonna believe me. Cause it happened to her before when she was in the civilian world and nobody did believe her. And that was very triggering for me. And the person that raped her was in the military. So she refused to report him, so I did. So I wrote to my Congress senators and I explained what was happening in Korea, what my best friend dealt with, what I was dealing with, and that I was, I was pleading for help. So it did go, so they reached back out. I went to the Department of the Army first and then down, it was not received well. There was a lot of retaliation for me. Barely got out of Korea and it was really bad for my mental health. The retaliation I faced was my commander sent me to this another doctor that was not my doctor, never seen me before. So she went back to my commander and she told him she has bipolar one and that she should be medically discharged. And then they tried to pressure my actual therapist to change the diagnosis and kick me out of the military. I was so stressed out, I couldn't sleep. I woke up late. They're like, um, next time you come up late or you do something else, we're gonna give you Article 15. So they try to get me kicked out dishonorably that way. I was really scared what they're going to do next because they had the power to do anything. I was allowed to leave Korea due to fearing for my life. After I came back from Korea and went to my new duty station, there was always this feeling of, they're not just gonna leave me be, like they spoke to my commander here in Virginia Beach. There was always something that they did tarnish my reputation. Um, there was always this shadow I was under a lot of stress in Virginia Beach, so the doctor gave me medication and I was supposed to be deployed back again to Japan. 
but they told me that the medication they gave me was not, you can't deploy with it. So it automatically started a medical discharge. I didn't want to leave, but they were like, you have to go. So I, was, I, just, I just stopped fighting and I was like, maybe it's time to leave. After I left the military, the transition was pretty rough. I was anxious all the time. My mother noticed it. You know, she, she would say, hey, breathe. I was just, I was scared. It, it affected my friendships. It affected everything. I was really depressed. And um, after I left the military, every day I used to get suicidal thoughts. It never ended. And then when I got into an unhealthy marriage, um, it made it worse. And when I was pregnant, like I got more suicidal thoughts. And it was really scary. I was seeing a therapist from psychology today and the bills were piling up because I was seeing her at least once a week. And I told her about it. I was like, oh, the money's getting too much, the copay. She said that I'm part of Headstrong. She was like, you should apply for it. You would qualify. And that way I could see you for free. I knew I had to get help. So I applied and Sam reached out to me. It, would, it didn't take long. It was like within a couple weeks. They were like, yes, you qualify. And then since my therapist was part of Headstrong, I just continued to see her. But I gained a lot by being a Headstrong patient. I've gained clarity. I left the unhealthy marriage. I learned, I, I gained self-love and I choose myself now. You know, I put myself first. I deserve to be happy and the best because I'm the best version of myself now. I deserve people who are the best version of themselves to be in my life. I gained yeah, self-love, confidence, communication, my favorite, and boundaries, those two. I gained those, I'm really, they changed my life. I can't say that enough. So I, I'm happier for it. When I was pregnant, I had to think about my child. I saw how my parents were with me and I saw their relationship to each other. I saw my siblings and I saw my trauma. And I was like, I don't wanna put that trauma to this kid. So that's when I had to do the hard work of deal with my childhood trauma, deal with the military trauma. That was really, really tough to do. And I, I because of it, I am a better mother. And I have healthier relationships with my friends because of it. I'm responsible of creating my future every single day, like every minute. It's like, it feels, it's like this power. That's like a new high of, like I am powerful. Like I can take care of myself. I could do this. I can create my future. So I don't have to rely on empathy or, you know, being the victim anymore. I'm like, I'm a survivor now. Makes me much stronger. If 9-11 had not happened, maybe I wouldn't have dealt with the abuse that I did. I think it was just for some reason I was supposed to stay back home. And I don't question that. I do not believe that time heals all. I think work, hard work and working on your trauma heals it all. I don't think time has anything to do with it. Because if you don't do anything about it, you're not really gonna heal. I constantly work on myself and always trying to get better. That's what I can say healed 20 years of trauma. My son Thor is so amazing. He, every day, he teaches me self-love. I love staying in the present moment with him because he's so, he's so innocent and he's so happy. And I wanna give him everything that he deserves, which is the best the best mom, you know, the best time. And I don't remember my childhood, but I'm gonna make sure that my child does and it's all going to be happy. I wanna give him everything that I didn't have. When I was 11, I was back home and I prayed. And I was like on this prayer mat. And I said to myself that I prayed to God, I was crying and I said, I wanna get out of this house. I wanna be independent. I wanna have my own career. I just wanna be happy and content. Everything I dreamed of, I've achieved and some more. So yes, I believe I'm the most courageous person I know. And I believe my son will be too. <laughs>